whiskey vault. I'm Daniel. I am Rex. What do we got? This is a, a rep sent us these. Chris Tetterton, who has financial interest in this brand. So it's a different, um, it's a, uh, like, thank you. Uh, but just a little awkward. <laughs> what do we got? Bourbon. Okay. Whiskey. Yes. Here, <laughs> let me do it. <laughs> old I'm VM, so old VM tar, T A R R, Kentucky Street whiskey. There's got to be a story behind this tar. Film. Yeah. So they had the first distillery license in Kentucky. Wow. Registered distillery number one, and okay. then it went out of business. And because of prohibition. So you got to believe that there was quite a healthy amount of spirit making before the first official yeah, license. Yeah, it's but like they're the ones that got, yeah. Yeah. Is it's it like Glenn Livett in Scotland, the first legal license from the Highland distillery. Or if you want. And everyone knows there was no whiskey in the Highlands until that day. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can't tax anything. It's not all right. these peat sheds suddenly sprouted whiskey barrels. Um, am I misremembering that in Texas it was Tito? That that the craft, yeah, 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 yeah. Broke, Tito really carved the way. He broke the seal. That's very yeah. recent, but that's for vodka behind the curve. First, have. so this is the same, effectively the same spirit, mm -hmm. but uh, it's different batches, and it's an interesting thing. So these guys bought, uh, revived this brand, William yeah. Tar, and then an investment firm bought them recently, mm -hmm. and they're trying to grow the whole brand. Okay. Uh, they're sourcing from an undisclosed Kentucky distillery. Uh huh. And here's where it gets interesting. And the reason I have two is because one is 94, 96.4 proof, mm -hmm. and the other one is a 114 proof. You poured the 114. So we're going to. What did you pour? No, I no, poured the low proof one first. Proof. Okay. Yeah. And then we're going to compare it to the higher proof one. Yeah? Uh, the nose is like one of those cherry suckers you get at the, the doctor's office as a kid. Yeah. And it has a loopy handle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those. So here's the trippy thing about this. And then, of course, the oak is in there, too. But Cherry Sucker. This is, by the way, batch A910 for the lower proof. Mm -hmm. And for the higher proof, batch A903. This is a mix of rye and bourbon. Okay. I wasn't yeah. really uh, getting a huge amount of rye jumping out of the It's a blend of, the of the two different things. Yeah. That's why it's called straight bur whiskey instead of straight bourbon or straight rye. Uh, it's roughly a 60-40 split in mm -hmm. favor of the rye. For me, this is a cherry forward bourbon. I'm surprised by the rye. It's an eight year old rye. Now, here's why you're not, here's why you should be surprised. Okay. It's a Kentucky rye, mm -hmm. which is not down the home plate for the heavy burp. Yeah, it's, it's not It's MGP. also only 51% rye grain on the rye. Okay. 37% corn. Yeah. Yeah, and 12% okay. malted barley. And then the bourbon they chose was 75, 13, 12. 75 bur uh, corn, 13 rye, so 12 barley. So, however, they balance the spirits that are in there, it is very squarely in the familiar territory of Kentucky spirits. It is. It's, it is way more, to your point, this light candied nose. Mm -hmm. It's cherry forward. Instead of the candy. darker sugars and vanillas. Yep. And there's a little little dusting on cinnamon, of cinnamon on the back in there, on the nose. I still haven't tasted it. Yeah, it really is more like an apple pie, if I had to pick, on the nose. Okay. Yeah, I get a bit more cherry than apple, but there's definitely apple in there. Uh, with a cherry on top. Well, what? that's just, you can't do that. Yeah, you can't I, don't think, do that. I don't think that's actually possible. <laughs> Have you ever had a, an apple pie served with a cherry on top? That'd be hilarious. Here you go. <laughs> like, wait, that doesn't compute. Uh, I'm going in. Oh, there's the spice. Yeah. It's a little more bitey. Not as soft as that I would have trace thought. Trace of cinnamon I was getting on the nose to show up more on the taste. Um, the barrel, there's a bit of a cherry bitter finish on the end. Now I'm getting the cherry cola mm -hmm. in the nose, if we go back to the nose. Yeah. Cherry is kind of the, the front leading flavor across nose and palate for me. Mm. I don't dislike it. I think it's nice, but it also feels very familiar. It does, for such old whiskeys, an eight and a seven, I mean, it's not that old, but you know what I mean. Like yeah. that, that for birth, hefty. Sure. It's yeah. Pretty. It's got this really thin uh, entry, and then it sort of spikes out into all of those sweet notes. Mm -hmm. All the sweet notes are sharp and bitey. And then the finish is sort of like a really quickly gone you ever sweetness. Had a, like, like a cherry flavored tea? Like a no. cherry infused tea? 
Mm-mm. Well, it's almost exactly what you would imagine. Mm. A little bit of a maraschino vibe infused with a black tea. Right. Yeah, and I like both of those things, but I do think you do need to be comfortable and enjoy a cherry flavor yeah. in your American whiskey for that. And a little bit of bite. This is the cast strength, or I mean, assuming cast strength, it's 114. Wow, that is different. What Much is- darker on the nose. Yeah, it's more nutty and almost a nutmeg in addition to the nuttiness. And a wicker. Okay. Huh. I am getting a lot more of the that wax sort of wood varnish note. Yeah. I think the I, cherry is toned way down. It is. No, the, the ch- brown sugar toned way down. The baking spice mm-hmm. and the bake the pastry notes way down. This is this a little bit more of an interesting, you know, because it doesn't feel so familiar. Right. I was like, oh, right. this is this is off the beaten path. It's got some combination of notes if, that I don't know. If you were get. asked blind whether this was bourbon or rye, what would you guess? Man, that would be a tough one. Because I, the telltale signs of bourbon and telltale signs of rye, it's not throwing it over home plate on any, either of those. Yeah, because I'm not getting the generic, whiskey. like, okay, corn, dust, and grain, and I'm also not getting heavy spice. I would say craft rye. Really? Yeah. Eventually. What's funny is I was about to say, I would say craft bourbon <laughs> with a high rye mash bill. Okay. Right? All right. Yeah. There's just, after you get away from the black anise stereotypical MGP rye palette, you do start to get in flavors like this. Ooh. I kind of like the nose better, but uh, you, yeah. what do you say? That one's way more vanilla bitey. Did you take a sip already? No, just no. Okay. It's way more bitey and the vanilla takes over instead of a cherry cream. Yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't have, it's a more layered and complex nose than a taste. Yeah, a very lingering spice. Yeah. Like it, I'm getting the, the pepper the, the that the just texture, won't go away. The feeling of it. Like a little bit of a, yeah, a fizzy burn. Hmm. If I had to pick, strangely, I think I'm going back to the lower proof. I, I like the nose of the second one better. It's more yeah. interesting nose. But it's a much more simple taste. I do like the taste of the first one you poured. I forgot to get your comments. They're over here. Let me just... (laughs) Let me just help you out there while I I get the comments. So make sure you walk away in slow motion so they can... There you go. Yep, that's happening. That's... (laughs) (laughs) You're welcome. Uh, Eric Arundel. <laughs> yep, that's happening. Uh, I have a question. Is there an industry term for the base product offered by a distillery? So the automotive industry calls it the base model. Right. What's the whiskey equivalent? Um, and then he wanted to clarify. Most all brands have their mass-produced spirits, like E.G. Da- Jack Daniels, Old Number 7, and Maker's Mark. Yeah, White These Label These are the being... ones they run a lot, the ones that make up most sales of the brand. I would call it their core line. Yeah, the core lineup is the best. Yeah. That's the best way to describe it. This is our core lineup. Right. We'll, we'll, and what they mean by that typically is we'll release this every year. Yeah, sometimes people will use the term like their flagship bottling. Mm-hmm. But if they have bottlings that are a little bit more prestigious, then Yeah, I think the, the entry flagship level, yeah. is more like the most often purchased. Like, So McAllen might have a core lineup that right. comes out every year, mm-hmm. but you would probably call the 12 their flagship. Like that's what they lead with. Sure, it depends right? on the distillery and the product Or Glenlivet 12. It like depends. Glenlivet 12 might be the flagship release, but the Glenlivet 18 is right. always part of, or whatever, What's whatever the core is lineup? part of the core lineup. Most of the time. Yeah, I think core lineup. Uh, John Rusin, John Rusin, have you guys ever had your tasting notes change drastically from one taste of a whiskey to mm. the next? Yes. The first time I tried Larceny, I got a distinct peanut note. I still do. Every time since then, I only get a grassy taste. Yeah. Interesting. You're acclimating to it and getting a little bit more of the wheat. Uh, I think... I've, uh, not in one sitting, yeah. but from bottle to bottle, I've come back to things. Uh, so, ironically, mm-hmm. monkey shoulder is one of these for me. Okay. When I first experienced monkey shoulder, I, I have these very strong, right. delicious butterscotch memories. Yes. And now when I go back, it's mostly the malt <laughs> funk that takes over for I me. I think, because uh, me, me too, with monkey shoulder, I do think there's probably been some flavor drift I over, think so too. over the years. But still. And the batches that we've gotten, it's like, man, I very clearly remember what this tasted like um, four years ago. And it's way more, it tastes a little more budgety. Yeah. But well, I've had that happen with um, big ones too. Yeah. Um, I had that happen with 
Uh, in the reverse, I've had that happen with Jack Daniels, mm -hmm. where I came back to Jack Daniels and thought, like, you know what? At a bar, actually, and thought, actually, this isn't that. This isn't half bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I actually kind of enjoyed it. It was an open bar for something where it's like, what's your whiskey? It's like, well, Jack Daniels. I'm like, all right, fine. Yeah. And I'm hanging out with people, and I'm like, I actually am enjoying this <laughs> more than I thought I would. Yeah, uh, I think as a category, the one that I have the least amount of variation in experience, for whatever reason, Irish seems to be mm. pretty consistent. Yeah. What I remember it being months ago, there years it is ago, again. I was like, yep. But American whiskeys, um, a lot of scotches, there's likely going to be a difference in what I remember it being versus mm. the difference of what it is in the glass. Sometimes it's less dramatic, but yeah, it's... Irish whiskey I got dialed in. It's very consistent. What are you, you looking where? My, is, my medallions won't. We just put it on it like. It's falling. Put it on the. On the it's not. The, it needs the cushion. It, I did that, but then. Give it, the most cushion. Then when I move. There you go. Just, it just a, a nice shifts. little pillow. You use that, that soft little pudding. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not holding. Yeah. You, you got to have like the rock hard purchase. Like the dad bod shelf. Well. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> something to rest your popcorn on. Right, just a, a shelf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, these are actually pretty damn good. I think if they're reviving something, I always have the thought, all right, is this just a brand play and they're going to release the anything? same thing anyone else can get. Or are they looking at like historical, what was it like, and trying to dial that in? I don't know that they're looking at historical, what but, was it like. But whatever they ended up crafting, putting in here, bottling, yeah. I think it's pretty good. Here's it's the, not. It's not bad. I liked uh, the nose of one and the taste of the other a right. bit more. But yeah, these are these are nice. I'm curious as to why they chose to blend rye and bourbon. Bourbon. Like, what was that decision tree? We're going to revive an old brand, right. and we're going to mix two primary American categories so that we can only ever release whiskey yeah. and not bourbon rye. I mean, maybe they're also going to be releasing rye and bourbon. Maybe it was better. And uh, and you got to throw a hat to that one if. If that's true. Sure. Well, they did, there's like Burai or Burai. What's By that? the way, they don't say, they have an NDA signed for their source, and Burai is the high west. Yeah. They have an NDA for their source, but he said if you if you know your mash bills, you can tell where they got it from. Uh, huh. Is Barton? No. I don't. Well, okay, so I'm not going to go on record as anything, but I will tell you that the yeah. bourbon mash bill is uh, 75 13 rye, 12 malted barley. Okay. So if you know a Kentucky distillery that has that mash bill. In the comments below, do the thing. And we will not do anything because apparently Daniel signed an NDA and I'm not going to be bothered enough to actually look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, not bad. Respectable. I yeah. think if somebody's going to dust off one of the oldest distilleries, they got to come out with something decent. Yeah. I think it's decent. Yeah. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your lover's hearts. And if you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. us.